烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. Well, yesterday's video about identity really struck a nerve. <laughs> We got several、uh, very interesting、uh, private messages,、uh, and we also had last night a couple of dreams about this. One was very powerful, and I want to share that with you now because of its instructive value. I was in this place, like a motel, you know, like where people would get together for groups and、uh, meetings and workshops and stuff like that. And there was one guy there, a young black guy, who was an artist, and he was doing these drawings, you know, these primitivist、uh, style drawings, with you know, funky looking. Guys holding spears and 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 shields with skulls on them, and、um, you know that that zigzag pattern and and canoes and leaves with eyes in them, and you know all this kind of funky jungle stuff, right? And I took a look at his work, you know, and it was it was facile. It had good technique. He was using just the right.、Uh, Color of like dirty red, you know, that's that's kind of mixed with particles, so it, it shows up on the page like spot, kind of spotty and rough looking. And the ochre color, the same style, you know, and green and this and that. So he was doing it everything right, right? And and everybody was going ooh and ah, you know, oh isn't this cool? Isn't this great? You know, like that. So I was like, uh huh, yeah. So later on. I got a chance to meet with him alone, and I gave him the sauce. <laughs> I said, "Dude, look, you're doing all this kind of jungle art, you know. But you know where you're from, like the suburbs of Philadelphia or someplace, you know. You 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 started doing this in high school in study hall or when you're in detention and you're bored and you had nothing else to do. So you looked up on the internet and you got some examples of primitive art and you started copying them, huh? And because you're a young, good-looking black kid, you got all the chickies around you and it was working for you in high school and it's still working for you now, but it's not who you really are. You probably never even been in a jungle. You probably never even been to Africa. Well, what are you doing with this, you know, phony bullshit art? I told him. I said, "Don't you realize you're painting yourself into a corner? Literally, <laughs> you're making all these paintings, and then people are going to come to expect it from you." You think this is going to satisfy you? Yeah, now you're getting laid and everything, and it's cool. But when you grow up a little bit, is it still going to work for you? I don't think so. And then I told him a story from my own past. I told him I grew up in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, which is right next to a town called Hackensack. You might recognize that if you're into jazz. Because Hackensack is a famous town for jazz, because there was a recording studio there where all the major jazz musicians used to record. So this place was only two miles from my house, and the minister of our church was also the minister of a black church in Hackensack, where a lot of these jazz musicians hung out. So, at being his like number one altar boy type, you know, I used to go with him to this church and do services, and I got to meet some of these jazz musicians in the church. And the first thing I noticed was that the the feeling of devotion and the sincerity of the people in this black church was like 
10 times the sincerity of the people in the, the lily white suburb where I grew up. Uh, there was zero black people in Hasbrook Heights, and, but Hackensack, two miles away, was full of them. So something was going on. Uh, and what it was is a whole nother story. But anyway, we went to this black church. I met the jazz musicians and I started hanging out at the studio. I mean, I could just hop on my bike and run down there in a few minutes. Rudy Van Gelders was the name of the engineer there. And Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Mingus, Coltrane, Eric Dolphy, you know, all these cats used to show up at this place regularly. And I would like, I would like sit across the street and wait for them to come in and out <laughs> and introduce myself, ask for autographs on their albums and stuff like this. I was a, I was a fanboy, okay? So gradually I got to know them and especially Eric Dolphy took me under his mentorship. And he, we used to do crazy stuff like once I was old enough to drive, I would pick him up in Harlem and then we would drive up the Hudson River, up the east side of the west side drive and go to the forest. Uh, there's lots of beautiful forest in upstate New York. So we would drive up there and we'd go into the woods, park and go into the woods and smoke a joint. Huh? And then we would play, we would jam with the birds. <laughs> This was my music lesson. Huh? So I used to uh, play this style of music that I learned from these guys. And I got pretty good at it because I had conservatory level training in performance and composition. So I used to compose all these songs and then do these outrageous solos. I, I put a link in the video description to one of my outrageous solos, <laughs> which you, if you have the patience and you have the taste for jazz, this particular wild, crazy style of jazz, then uh, you can listen to it. So there was only one problem with this. It wasn't me. It wasn't my art. It was a style that I picked up from people I hung out with. You know, as long as I was young and crazy and had plenty of energy, I could fake it. But, you know, what happens when I get older? What happens when I, you know, actually have to make a living? You know, maybe I have a family or something like that. Am I the real deal? No. I'm a white boy from the suburbs. I'm not a real jazz musician. Huh? Yeah, I can fake it, but so what? It wasn't authentic. And so that's what I was telling this kid. And so this has to do with identity, because as an artist, you have to find your artistic identity. You have to find your voice. You have to find that style, that approach to your art, whatever it is, that only you can do, that nobody can imitate. Huh? I mean, my uh, example in this regard is John Coltrane. Nobody can play like Coltrane. Well, actually, there are a couple of imitators now who can fake it and sound like, sort of like him in certain styles, but certainly they can't reproduce the entire uh, oeuvre, is the word, oeuvre, of Coltrane. So the real artist... You know, this is why the Dostoevsky said, the artist must suffer. The artist must suffer. Why? Because he has to go on a quest to find his authentic voice, uh, to find his authentic art. And, you know, when this all came home to me, it was when I was studying with Ali Akbar Khan. And Khan Saab told me, look, you're not the type, you're not cut out to be a concert artist. Your heart is too soft. You would never survive being on the road and dealing with criticism and all this stuff. It would, it would destroy you. He said, 
you should become a temple artist, a devotional artist, and do kirtan and prayers and stuff like that. That would be more like your real style. So I did, I studied that style, and I got to where I could do it flawlessly. But guess what? It still wasn't me. It wasn't me because it was imitation. Huh? I learned from others and could duplicate their styles. And of course, I learned a lot from it, but it still wasn't me. Now, I had to go into this very deeply because when my whole life fell apart, when I was 64 years old, one of the cornerstones of that life was that, that musical talent, that musical ability to imitate just about any style. Huh? And it was inauthentic. It wasn't me. And I had to go on a long search, huh? a years long search. And it was very painful because I had to give up doing music so I could hear the music inside. And in the meantime, the whole jazz scene fell apart. The whole progressive and experimental jazz thing became very unpopular. You know, nobody could make a living at it anymore. The whole scene was practically finished. And then the only jazz now is this commercial smooth jazz crap, you know, which is meant for office background music and all this bullshit. So, <laughs> to see, this is what would have happened to me if I had based my life on that style of music. The only place I would be able to play is like maybe Tokyo, you know? So what this led to after a long painful search, after having to give up music for many years, is that I realized I'm not actually a musician. <laughs> I'm not actually a writer either, even though I've spent most of my life as a professional writer. What am I? I am what I am. I am a sadhu, and I am one who shares my experience in such a way that others can benefit from it. This is my art. And I found it through a very long, painful search of having to give up other forms of art that I was doing. And meanwhile, I felt compelled to share the stages of my spiritual search. Even though I look back on some of those early videos and cringe, <laughs> still, those were important stages in my development, and I'm not going to hide them. So, Everybody has to go through this in spiritual life to find their particular approach, their unique style and uh, method of worshiping God. Because let me tell you something, each and every one of us was created for a specific reason. God had something in mind when he made each one of us and after making us, he broke the mold and threw it away. We're all completely unique because we are designed to perform a specific service, a specific type of worship to God that only we can do. See, that's why I don't take very seriously trying to train up disciples to be a clone of me. No, I, my approach is I give my friends the information and the tools they need to find their own way, to find their own style, their own approach, and their own flavor of devotion and their own specific service to God that only they can do. And this is the authentic bhakti. This is the authentic spiritual life. Huh? And this is the authentic path that leads to actual liberation, which is a process of becoming that unique being 
that God intended us to be. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.